So I'm starting out by transferring my drawing to a piece of canvas paper uh, in a rectangle that I've drawn out to four by five inches. I thought uh, it would be less time consuming to paint just a portion of the dog instead of the whole thing. As you can see, I drew some squiggly lines for myself just to remind myself where the darkest values lie in the reference photo. This just helps remind me because I tend to get lost when I'm painting and lose my way sometimes. If this does happen, it doesn't mean that your painting is ruined. Um, it just means that you need to kind of stop and reevaluate your reference photo in order to figure out where the different values lie. I start with the same basic color palette that I use more or less for every pet portrait I do. It consists of Mars Black, Titanium White, Ultramarine Blue, Cerulean Blue, Naples Yellow, Alizarin Crimson, and then later I use some Burnt Umber and Yellow Ochre. I decided to start with a black dog so we can focus more on the value rather than the color. It's good to note that value is a lot more important than color when you're trying to paint a subject in order to give it form. We can even give a subject believable form if we using colors that don't actually exist in nature if we just focus on the correct value. So let's look at our reference photo. I have marked in red outline where I see all the darkest values in the reference. So I usually start by mixing up a dark value to represent the areas that I've marked off in my reference photo. I hardly ever use pure black, even in a black dog, because I feel like that Mars black can be a bit boring and a little flat. I'll usually mix in some blue or red depending on whether I see cool shadows or warmer shadows in those dark areas. It's really your pre preference as you want to focus more on value at this stage. I am using acrylic paint so blending is really hard unless you paint fast. So instead of worrying about that at this point, I focus more on painting in the abstract shapes of the shadows. It's okay if you overpaint these a little bit. We're going to be working in layers so we'll refine their shapes later on. This is just the first layer so I try to lay in those shapes as best as I can and I do try to somewhat follow the direction of the hair growth to make things easier for me later on. Now to my existing black mixture, I'm going to lighten it up a little bit and warm it up a little bit. Looking at the next lighter value in my reference photo, I can see that those colors are slightly warmer. So I do add in some alizarin crimson and still a little bit of blue as well and a little naples to lighten it up. I did accidentally paint in one area with the dark value that was I should have probably used the next lighter value, but that's okay. We'll fix that later. One thing to notice is that the change in the value is barely even noticeable on the camera. It's more visible in person, but still not a huge jump in value. Something I've learned is that jumping up in value too soon, meaning going too light too early, can make your artwork start to look less believable, less dimensional than a gradual increase in lightness. I like to build up my layers gradually as this tends to yield the most realistic effect. So now I start to mix up an even lighter value by adding in some blue and white to the previous color and painting in those shapes where I see them in my reference. It's the same process as before where I'm just painting in the abstract shapes, only I will add in different colors to give them the shapes slightly different hues. Sometimes I'll add in Naples, sometimes Cerulean, sometimes a little more white, just to give it some variety. A lot of times if you look at your reference photo really closely, you can see that although the values might be the same in some areas, some of those spots are a little bit warmer, some are a little bit cooler, some may be slightly darker, slightly lighter, so it's, it's good to vary up your colors. So here I'm just going to go ahead and paint in the eye and fill in the nose a little bit just to kind of give those abstract shapes and the fur a little bit of context. I like to watch my painting kind of come to life so painting the eye is part of that. 
This is where I bring in some of that yellow ochre and burnt umber as well. If you'd like to see a more slow done version of how I paint an eye, I'll link it in the description below. I do have an old how to paint a dog eye video out. I would like to make an updated version of that soon. Let me know if the, in the comments if that's something that you'd like me to do. So now that we have all the basic shapes and values laid in, it's time to start refining. I do this by going back and mixing pretty much the same colors we had going on before and reinforcing those areas. I use little dabbing motions with my brush to mimic short hairs. I don't try to draw in every single strand of hair, but more I try to paint the indication of little hairs here and there, extending from areas of darker value into lighter values and vice versa. It's those little transition areas that draw your attention. And if the small variations in brush strokes that suggest the hairs are there, they can trick your brain into believing that you're looking at fur patterns. Painting at this stage is just a constant pushing and pulling. I'm pushing areas of darker values into areas of lighter values at their borders in order to better mimic my reference photo and hoping that this will lead to the illusion of dimensions. Uh, as we build more and more layers on top of each other, I paint in the gradual lighter values in those areas of middle tones here and there as I see in the reference. It's important to preserve some of those darker values underneath so that you don't completely lose them, but it is good to place some lighter values on top just to give those middle tones some, some variation and some interest. Just look at your reference photo. As long as you're using that as your guide, there really are no wrong moves. Um, for some smaller variations, I eventually end up switching to a smaller brush um, and that will help to just allude to the fact that there are some small hairs there. But the whole time that I'm painting, whether I'm using a larger brush or a smaller brush, I'm being mindful of the fur patterns and painting in the same direction. So here's what the final short fur demo piece looks like. You can definitely spend a lot more time refining your brush strokes and building up your layers than I did. This was just a quick demo in my process. So some key points to take away from this tutorial is to break down your subject into abstract shapes based on values. You don't need any software to do this. You can just use a highlighter or a marker onto a printed picture. Or you can just do it mentally. Next, paint in these abstract shapes. This is your first layer. Next, build layers on top of those base values with some variations in color and some slight variations in value. Use a smaller brush to push and pull those value borders into each other in the direction of hair growth. Most importantly, make sure you practice. Practice, 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 and of course have fun. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope this helped you in some way. I'll see you next time.